Greetings and welcome to the Mount Rushmore Podcast. My name is Jeff, and guess who else is in the room? It's my good buddy Richard. Hello. And Michael. Howdy. You know what we do. You know how we do it. So let's get right to it. This is the Mount Rushmore of Dangerous Toys. Guys, what do you think about this, Richard? I love it. You know, I, I, I think that all, all kids love da- dangerous toys. Generally, yes. the more dangerous, the better. Yes. So these, these are not only, for the most part, going to be, um, at least my picks will not only be things that are dangerous, but also things that I really wanted to have when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Winfield, you have uh, a younger kid. Uh, I know, yes. Richard, you have young, young children. Maybe they're out of the, uh, oh, I'm going to be a helicopter parent and worried about them getting injured by toys. But uh, uh, what do you feel about Felix encountering dangerous toys? What's the dangerous thing he's got? Um, I mean, we shouldn't have gotten him, him that bag of glass. That certainly. <laughs> uh, but it was a good price, you know, so. <laughs> Um, hey, what's the every, bag made out of? Every kid loves playing with glass, you know? Hey, yeah, they do. <laughs> it um, looks like I'm, candy. You know, it's funny because there are things that are dangerous uh, in the world that are just like uh, – are going to just cause you mm, just immense pain. And I kind of ruled out, out something like, uh, like a skateboard or a bike because those are just uh, – I don't even know if they're – quite count as toys they're just things that you constantly get hurt on <laughs> yeah um but you know when i was thinking of this list definitely um felix was for and forefront in my in my mind about um oh god what are the things that could hurt him at the age of three or what can he do now that he couldn't do because of his age from when he was you know started playing with toys you know six months old to you know, it's a very funny thing is that he is three years old and he's already like reminiscing on what it was like to be a baby. So we pulled out this big box of like old baby toys that we had in the garage this weekend. We did it on Saturday and, you know, it's like soft building bricks and this thing that you hit with a hammer and the pegs go up and down. And I'm looking at this <laughs> box that he played with for, you know, nine hours and then has promptly forgotten about because he's grown past these but it's just very interesting to have uh uh him be wistful about yeah <laughs> like these soft bath toys that were is now in a box downstairs versus like uh you know earlier today uh, we watched how to train your dragon and we spent a good hour and a half um using these little knights that he has with these sharp ass swords um, pretending they were Vikings fighting this dragon that's actually a rubber Godzilla that we have busting out of this. And it was just like y- y- you move on so quickly from like banging something with a, a wooden mallet to mm-hmm. uh, uh, I don't know. It was just very it was very interesting that we're doing this this topic yeah. on the heels of uh, us bringing up um, a cadre of squishy oh, his things. Baby toys. Yeah, he's yeah. having his mid toddler crisis this is not it's a very crisis. strange yeah it is. it's very uh, he's always asking questions about like what it was life what he's like when i was a baby this kid's yeah. three <laughs> when, I was a, <laughs> when i was a baby did what did we, what did we talk what did we eat when i was a baby what did we talk about <laughs> nothing you're a baby you're an idiot yeah that uh was is any of his toys does he refer to them as <laughs> ever because i think you're raising citizen king i know what i think is interesting is is we grow out of toys i think sometimes because we've learned everything we can from them and toys have i think through most of um civilization been learning tools been a thing to either te- maybe they're uh if they are toyified versions of things that an actual adult would use in their profession mm. Mm. um but I think this era, this century that we're in, might be one of the, um, obviously it's the biggest uh, boom for people to have expendable income and uh, um, manufactured goods and things like that. So we can actually have toys. But one thing I'm fascinated is any toy can really be dangerous depending on the intellect of the child. <laughs> so I was oh, thinking sure. about a deck of cards is uh, 52 plus joker uh, uh, ways to cut yourself with a paper cut. So um I, I do find it interesting that 
um, certain, you know, like Eskimo communities, uh, parents give their kids knives at early age because they're going to have to learn to use them anyway. So um, that's, <laughs> that's interesting, compelling. What, what is a toy? All right, moving forward. Okay, so uh, um, this episode is actually sponsored by Theodore Roosevelt and the, uh, <laughs> uh, the most popular toy, which was an actual live bear cub, which was uh, <laughs> given out to children, young children back in the day. Uh, hungry too, oh, starved bear cup. Um, so, uh, Richard, you went first last time. So, Michael, you go first this time. Okay. Um, the first thing um, that I thought of, uh, I thought of in the moment as um, it was dangerous to me, which is just good old fashioned Legos. And oh, yeah. Legos, Legos had that have that dual um, danger issue. One. They're not for children under three because uh, of the kind of choking, swallowing hazard. And uh, as soon as Felix turned three, we got him some Legos. So, like, uh, we were riding the edge of that danger zone real quick. It was like, oh, three years old, boom, got him some Legos. Let's see if he's going to swallow these or whatever. But, of course, you know, the other true danger is just the size you step on them, you – yeah, your feet get impaled by these things. I stepped on. Uh, we got him a a Star Wars Lego set that had like a a Jawa and a Jawa cave, and it had just like this orange spiky bush thing, and you know just right into the right into How? the fleshy part of your foot, and you're just like, God damn, these fucking plastic pieces of shit from Sweden. <laughs> where are they? I don't know, but you know, it's just like that thing where so much of having a toddler is uh, can we get him this because will he swallow it or put it in his mouth? And luckily he got past that um, kind of putting things in his mouth phase when he was like two ish, just around two that we didn't really have to worry about it. That, But it's, it's seriously, it's, it's all you think about as a, uh, as a parent It's like, you're yeah. cutting up blueberries, you're cutting up carrots, you're, you're, so careful on these things that are just can be lodged in a windpipe and Legos are those things that are like, they can be the smallest, uh, you know, smallest piece of plastic you've ever seen in your life that you drop it on the floor and it goes under the couch. You're never going to see it again, or your foot goes right onto it. You, you know, it, it practically impales you and you're just like, mm -hmm. I hate this. I mean, yeah. and the third, the third dangerous aspect is when you don't quite build something, to your kid's requirement and just the look, <laughs> <laughs> the look of disappointment in your, the in their eye. It's just like, it's like that. They're like, that really doesn't look like the, you know, uh, Yoda's hut. And you're just like, <laughs> what? Well, look, I only had so many green bricks. So sorry, kid. Do you have you, or has Felix or Richard, have you ever, or Simon pinched yourself between two Lego bricks? I've done that before. I, I, ow. Just yeah, me. that's that's a that's that's a bad one. Um, mm -hmm. Fortunately, we never had to deal with the fact that they're a choking choking hazard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my kids were always smart enough to know not to put Legos up their nose or down their throat. Yeah, so that could be another way in which they could be dangerous as well, I suppose. So, uh, Christy Patterson Veach and Matt Larue, both on the uh, Facebook crowdsource mentioned Legos, and I think they may have done that uh, as a parent. You know, it's uh, something you know that you're, you could uh, get hurt by, too. So that's a cool uh, cool first pick. Uh, Richard Manfredi, what do you got? Uh, my first one is something that you can no longer buy, and these are lawn darts. Yeah. Also, also on my list, jarts. Okay, yeah. Jarts, another, another name for them. I wanted these so bad when I was a kid, and my parents wouldn't get them because, oh, they're dangerous, and you might oh, might get a dart through your foot or something like that. <laughs> um, so if you guys don't, or maybe if some of you are too young to remember what they were, they were essentially flying project, sharp flying projectiles that weighed about 20 pounds. <laughs> the, the goal was to throw them into a, a plastic ring that was on the ground, uh, kind of like, uh, like darts. But invariably, kids being kids, if you give a give an 11 year old something that can be thrown at another 11 year old that's what's going to happen to them so it took the the deaths of three children 
before the government stepped in and actually banned lawn darts at the end of 1988. And they actually recommended, recommended that any remaining sets be destroyed. That's how dangerous lawn darts wow. were. Um, but I still wanted them when I was a kid. I thought I, it looked like the coolest game, just kind mm-hmm. of tossing these big, heavy, like footballs with, uh, with with needles on the end, sharp needles on the end of them. Yeah. Into the ground. I mean, who who wouldn't want that? I mean, see, it feels like, you know, you put put water balloons on the ground and see if you can per- burst them. So much stuff you could do with a lawn dart. And I was mm-hmm. I was always disappointed that I, I pull, never, put an I never got yes. one before. Yeah. Pull on your friend's head. Yeah. Little see if William you can. <laughs> um, I do like looking at like old 1960s or maybe 70s box art for the jarts. It says jarts, a missile game. <laughs> and like right there, right there, right there, you should know uh, this is this is horrible. Was jarts the treat <laughs> to the spam of lawn darts, or I wonder what? Oh, uh, good question. Which came first? Um, oh, I javelin know, j- darts. Jarts is javelin darts. Uh, yeah, so jart. Those. Jart sounds like uh, like a uh, you know an early twenty thirteen. Uh, startup. Yeah. That it, it just went nowhere. Would that have been said to be the guy who was like preternaturally skilled at jarts and <laughs> he's bad at everything else and he thinks this is my game. <laughs> oh my God. That is, hard. that was like 10% of, um, of like the kickball crew we kind of hung out with. They were good at the, you know, the act of throwing <laughs> things at things. Every yeah. <laughs> every drinking game, every game that was played in the backyard was basically, yeah. um, you know, whether it was washoes or oh yeah, uh, <laughs> cup or yeah, yeah. Flip cup or uh, um, cornhole, or, uh, cornhole. You know, jarts. I'm surprised didn't take over because it was, da- you know, uh, lawn darts are effectively dangerous things that you should not put in the hand of absolutely kids, and especially not in the hand of like um, you know, someone that's twelve mm-hmm. beers in on a Saturday. Yeah. Well, well, they tried to uh, redo lawn mark or lawn darts after they got banned, but they just had like a heavy weighted tip. Yeah. Say who cares? Mm. Who cares about that? Exactly. I mean, yes, you could still probably brain somebody with it, but you're not going <laughs> to impale them. Where's the fun in that? You know, they missed they missed the marketing opportunity with like having them like uh, uh, painted like in the style of like Bonk from Bonk's Adventure. <laughs> they really could have gotten some good crossover, uh, heavy, uh, <laughs> weighted lawn dart action there. There was something very, um, it almost feels like this is something that would have been introduced in the last season of Mad Men because it speaks of the uh, suburbanization <laughs> of mm. America. You couldn't have done that when you lived in uh, the two-story brownstone walk-up <laughs> in, uh, in Brooklyn. There was no lawn. You need a lawn to play lawn darts. Yeah, a, a that's funny. Seven-year-old yeah. Michelle Snow was killed by a lawn dart thrown by one of her brother's playmates in the backyard of their home in Riverside, California. What good comes from Riverside, California? I ask. You. <laughs> yeah. It's the oh. Florida. It's the Florida of California yeah. for those yeah. of you who aren't familiar with it. Oh, poor. I'm sorry. R.I.P. Uh, Michelle. So um, that uh, is cool. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Man, Freddie, what is your second choice to wrap up the all right the first half? My second choice, also something that you need a lawn to be able to use, mm. and that, that is the slip and slide. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Because that, that is that is an easy way to, to break a leg, mm-hmm. separate a shoulder, get, oh, paraly- sure. get paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 1993, the Consumer Product Safety Commission actually had to issue a formal warning against teens and adults from using them because of a, a rash of neck injuries and uh, wow. paralysis taking place because, and, and Michael, you remember this from some of the, the uh, kickball, kickball Palooza tournaments in Vegas. Well, they I, would, well, I, they I do have, find it, I do find it interesting that um, we are equating so much stuff with like things that could possibly injure children is a direct correlation onto things that um, injure inebriated <laughs> adults. But yes, of course. Yes, they would have this uh, giant hill. The, the whole tournament was basically inside a bowl where all the fields were, and there was a hill kind of all around it. And at, I 
for a few years at least, they had set up a giant tarp type slip and slide with water pouring down it. And this thing must have been, I don't know, 25 feet tall, 30 feet tall, easy. Yeah, they, they had um, uh, some of the uh, drunken rabble initially on that first year, 2008, I believe, had torn – just just torn down the plastic um, banners that were surrounding one of like the tents and just were just like, we're, turn- we're, we're taking this on ourselves. And then they tried to recapture the magic um, over the next uh, couple of years to uh, less, less and less uh, – Diminishing return. Success. Yeah, yeah. You can't, it, you know, you, it's hard to capture um, lightning in a bottle like that. Yeah, so the, the slip and slide I just love because it's essentially, look, we're going to take away all ability for you to stand or balance. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, all, all friction will be lost. Mm-hmm. You are just going to go sliding and wherever you happen to line up or however you happen to land, that's on you, dude. <laughs> we take we take no responsibility for your lack of your lack of friction. I love it that during the the inevitable lawsuit, all the uh, <laughs> lawyer for the defense had to do is point to the to the box title. Your Honor, it clearly says slip and slide. It there does no... what it, it does <laughs> what it says it does. There's no doubt about that. Wow. Uh, yeah, I as a child recall uh, hitting. A number of uh, broken bottles and rocks. Uh, oh, that was always the worst. You, whenever you'd get yeah. like a hidden rock or a stump or something yeah. underneath the slip and slide and you come skidding on that, next thing you know, you got your back all scraped up. No good. Yeah. Okay, that brings us to our halftime. And this is when we implore you to go back and uh, sup from the, the uh, delicacies of our previous episodes. Mm. Um, drink fully uh, of all the topics that we've discussed in the past and then you know like you would uh, after you eat at a restaurant go ahead and leave a yelp review download um, those uh episodes and then rate them uh you could be the next um snarky clickbait uh ranker this could be like a buzzfeed like do an article on the top uh Mount Rushmore episodes ranked best to worst who's gonna rank us all our episodes best to worst <laughs> Tied for worst. Tied all. For worst, all of them. <laughs> uh, do us a solid go and suggest a topic for an episode. We'd love to hear what you think we should debate. And people have done that in the past. They've ended up being on the show. And it was super cool and fun. You can do that on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And Michael Winfield, what's your third choice? Uh, my third choice is a doll uh, called My Friend Kayla. And this was a doll that came out between 2014 and 2017. And it is uh, like an internet connected speech recognition doll. So you could say, uh, hey, Kayla, um, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to say, what does a dog say? And Kayla says, after a beat, a dog says bark. Uh, Or you could say, uh, hey, Kayla. Um, who won the Academy Award for Best Picture of uh, 1994? <laughs> and then it would the Best Picture went to Forrest Gump or whatever it was. I'm pretty sure it was um, Forrest Gump. So this, but, this this sounds like a Teddy Ruxpin crossed with Alexa. Yes, it basically is, and um. It started to cause some concerns because it was connected to an internet search engine. It was a Wi-Fi enabled device. It was connected through Bluetooth. And this doll apparently um, uh, had two major issues. One, it kind of had some built-in kind of Disneyfication of it that parents weren't known of. If like you asked her her favorite song, she'd say like, let it go. She'd say she wanted to go visit Epcot, so she was clearly programmed as like a 41-year-old gay guy from Virginia. <laughs> um, What's wrong also, with that? There's nothing wrong with that, Jeff, a 50-year-old um, straight guy from the Valley. Was it a guy from the... <laughs> um, the second issue is a little bit more dangerous, is that it found they found out that it was pretty easily hackable, so you could one could kind of uh, hack into this doll and start having communications 
with the kid. You could listen to what the kid is saying and talk back. And, you know, that stuff is just so super creepy and so super uh, gross. Um, this kind of goes back to Felix when he was a, an infant. We had, you know, baby cams that were set up in his room and they were set up through whatever device that we bought and it was connected through the internet and um, you know you could look in through our Wi-Fi and see our home and like um, we started then reading that these sorts of devices were very easily controllable and hackable and like people could start in theory moving the camera and talking to your kid and we started hearing reports that this would happen and it's just like holy shit we ripped that one right out of the wall and got like a brand new camera and like this stuff is like dangerous not in a it's going to um physically hurt them but man i can't imagine the mental scars of some monster out there just having these, these super gross conversations with your kid through God. like this cherished doll wow i mean it's it's shades of you know chucky but mm -hmm. like chucky's not you know wielding a butcher's knife he's um you know yeah saying horrible things to your child this oh it's, it's it's been it's been banned in germany yeah and it, they, they don't produce it anymore this feels like a plot right out of um amazing tales or tales from the crypt or the twi outer limits or something like that a talking doll gone wrong, but as a uh, spying device or this creep, creep city. I've never heard of this thing. Yeah, wow. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm going to go on it's, record and say I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> okay, one for I don't like it. Yeah. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff for see... let me look up the Wi-Fi password. And <laughs> If you were – okay, let's take it uh, – that's a con. And uh, let's say <laughs> <laughs> if you're a lonely – truck driver let's say love this. Or some guy. i yeah. love i love i love that you're doing the pro side of this horrible <laughs> doll go ahead <laughs> who who's the guy who's disappointed that this thing doesn't get uh a little bit uh, intrusive into his life and doesn't kind of start to ask him personal questions and start to get a little bit weird on him that's mm. there's probably that guy mm. how much did i pay for this damn thing oh man <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh my god. I love the idea of like the truck driver. Um yeah. just hanging out with a doll, just having these conversations, just be like just having a good uh, old time. God, what's the best I just went to look it up. Forrest Gump did win for nineteen ninety four. No, I think Merle Haggard was better. No, you <laughs> shut up, Kayla. Why are you always doing this to me, Kayla? <laughs> Kayla does seem like a way like kind of like <laughs> God damn you, Kayla! <laughs> oh my dog! Like that does seem like somebody you would shout at. Uh, okay, all right, uh, Manfredi, what do you got? First off, our apologies to all of our Kayla listeners. Yes, out there. our Karens and Kaylas. Oh. Yes. Uh, my third choice is the Snack Time Cabbage Patch Kid doll. Dude, <laughs> I've, read, I've read about this. Keeping on the uh, train with with dolls. Yeah. This came out in 1997, um, right around Christmas time, and was pretty popular for a uh, brief moment. I'll just read you the headline from the January, actually it came out in 96. I'll read you the headline from the January 7th, 1997 um, Washington Post article. Mattel Inc. said yesterday it would stop making the Cabbage Patch dolls that can eat children's hair <laughs> and offered a $40 <laughs> refund to anyone returning the controversial toy. Now, that's not great marketing, <laughs> is that your doll is now being referred to as the doll that can eat children's hair. So I, do, whole... I, do, I do appreciate that last week uh, one of your choices was uh, Jaws from the Bond films. And this is the basically doll yeah. equivalent who just <laughs> <laughs> who yeah, also has a vice-like grip in her mouth. And I used to smoke for 10 years. Oral fixation? Who knows? Mm. Mm. Um, no, so this was essentially a Cabbage Patch doll that was designed so that it had a quote-unquote working mouth so that you could pick up plastic pieces of food and feed it with a spoon and it would chew up the, the food and swallow it and it would go in its stomach and you could pull it out later to do it again. 
Uh, the only, which is kind of creepy enough as it is. Yeah. The the main flaw is that the mouth didn't know it couldn't really <laughs> tell discern. Whether, yeah. Yeah, whether you were putting a flat piece of plastic, or some hair had gotten in there, or a kid's finger had gotten in there, and there were more than one hundred reports of the the patented chewing mechanism gobbling up girls' hair and getting stuck and there were some women some moms who had to call 911 for their kids because they couldn't get the kids hair out or was pulling out hair it was it was like an industrial accident is what it was mm-hmm. this is the wow. Jeff. special industrial accident waiting to happen Jeff this mm-hmm. is an this is another doll that this trucker um brought yeah. along for uh, for <laughs> other reasons that we just cannot talk about I I think the the <laughs> most disturbing thing is like i adopted you i adopt it's not like uh barbie where the bitch was just sitting on the shelf like this I mean, especially xavier roberts what have you done to me <laughs> it's like bad it's like the bad seed or something is happening uh, with these things <laughs> um, you know I, there were re- other people some in in the crowdsource mentioned a teddy ruxpin that ate hair but i didn't know there was a cabbage patch doll that ate hair yeah, I think that was the that was the one, and and Mattel actually had to. Not not only did they, as as I mentioned, they had to. It was one of the few times that they did a voluntary recall mm-hmm. of a toy. This wasn't something they went through the government. The government said, "No, you don't need to recall this." But from a PR standpoint, it yeah. just looks bad when all these kids' hair keep, get, keeps getting munched on by this demon seed doll. You know, there was a guy who said, we could recall, or we could put a Floby sticker on the package. Floby 2.0, it cuts your hair for you. Okay, uh, Winfield, your final choice. Uh, My final choice. I wanted to take this into the realm of um, a fictional choice, because sometimes we do delve into the fictional choice. And um, the the one that I really, really... um, I just could not get out of my head was the fictional board game from an episode of Ren and Stimpy called yeah. Don't Whiz on the Electric Fence. Yes. Wow. Which was Whiz just on uh, the electric fence. That's all you need. It was a one-off little joke for an episode where um, Ren's um, like uh, cousin from like um, Sven. Uh, Sven from like Sweden visited him and who is equally as dumb as Stimpy much to um, Ren's dismay and uh, in the episode they're watching a lot of TV and one of them has a commercial um, for this game called Don't Whiz on the Electric Fence and the cover of the game is just this little blonde haired boy uh, pulling down his pants and he's (laughs) you just set up an electric (laughs) fence and pee on it and the game is just all about that and of course they find the board game inside their um inside their closet and um uh ren of course is the one who does it he goes crazy he pees on the game he whizzes on the game uh causing everything to get uh, electrocuted and the house catches fire and explodes and um they go to hell and <laughs> Satan has them. So you whizzed on the electric fence, didn't you? And, <laughs> and then the, <laughs> the game plays again. But um, I don't know. I've seen a lot of board games that have come out that are kind of like these interactive board games over the last half dozen years, whether that's like the pie in the face game oh, um, yeah. where you put like just whipped cream on a mm-hmm. thing and you're, you get a pie in the face or – there's like a, I think it's called like the shaggy dog game or the washing dog game where I think you just basically get it's just, a, the game is a mess. The game is to create yeah. a mess, a wet mess, or you, you try. It's a, uh, it's a double dare obstacle come to life in board game format. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And um, it's funny. There's so many, you know, I, when I don't remember games like this when I was a kid, which I guess old man Winfield speaking up, you know, it was, it was candy land. It was, you know, the worst possible game you could play was um, Parcheesi or Life or something where getting set back to zero was the most horrible thing. But like these interactive, you know, dog shit kind of looking games. There's like a dog poop game out there. And yeah. it's like, God, I went through the fuck wants to play the dog poop game. And that makes me think of like 
oh, we've we've graduated. They've have, they've have adopted whatever don't whiz on the electric fences and mm-hmm. didn't quite make it deadly, but they make it just as like it's the idiocracy of <laughs> okay. yeah, of board games. Do you think strategy games we've kind of run out of them? Do you think that they're for every game that you have a procedural, everybody has to roll a die or do this or that. And so people are reaching out to almost manifest a type of a game that, that a couple idiot kids would make up in the, on a day in the summer, you know, with a can of whipped cream or something like that. Right. Have we run out of good ideas? Is that, is that why? I, I wonder why we're reducing to those. No, I think, I think there's, I think there is always going to be a, uh, a deep well of cleverness out there, but I think that there's oh. also a deep well of like stupid that is just enjoyable, yeah. and just the idea, yeah. the idea of just like you know this game, this fictional game of like, God, how dangerous is this thing? You're just gonna piss on an electric ride fence mm-hmm. and cause trouble. Mm-hmm. Is right right in tune with like uh, I'm gonna get a piece of pie in my face. Oh yeah, and I, and I think those games too. There is something about the fact that most kids spend their all of their lives online staring at screens playing mm. games with other kids online uh. who they don't know so this game so a game like pie face or like the, i know there's like a water balloon game i remember the kids playing in a friend's house one time um i think these games they kind of bring a, an, a level of physicality back to games that we just don't see anymore so i think that's oh, yeah. partially why they're why they're interesting to kids and adults hmm yeah, that's not is it is a visceral experience. It's certainly not virtual or cerebral. It's something that's that's very real. Um, and when you put a jart on that, <laughs> yeah, on the whipped cream handle that's ready to fly up, you're gonna shit got real. Yeah, yeah. I I like how yeah. many of these games ultimately are just playing a uh, you know a scaled down version of Russian roulette. Yeah. <laughs> it's all yeah. chance. It's it's all like just happenstance. Or when are you, when is when is this thing gonna fall? Is it gonna be you that causes it? You know whether it's mm-hmm. simple like don't break the ice and you're just hammering out these little yeah. ice cubes and the man sitting on the chair falls through or Jenga and the entire tower falls down or uh, you know there's a hand grenade on there and are you the one that's going to pull the pin mm-hmm. and destroy yourself? Who knows? I remember getting the deer hunter game when I was a kid. From my parents. <laughs> one I more not, shot. I did not like that game. <laughs> okay. You know what? Deer hunter game starts out all fun and games like in the, in the little town there. They're all having yeah. a good time. <laughs> oh yeah. First, the first, first few moves are great, but you get yeah. deep into it. It's a little, a little dark. Okay, man, Freddy, wrap it up. Rippity wrap. All right, so I also went with a fictional uh, toy for my last choice. Oh, wow. Oh, good. Um, mine is the Happy Fun Ball from do Saturday not Night Live. Oh, there are so many things you should not do with Happy Fun Ball. <laughs> uh, if you have not seen the commercial, I will, I will briefly summarize it. It starts off with Chan Hooks, Dana Carvey, and Mike Myers dressed up like, I don't know, 12-year-olds playing with just this real basic looking red rubber ball. It's happy fun ball. And then Phil Hartman's voice comes in is yes, happy fun ball. It's the sensation that's spreading across the nation. Get yours today. And then the uh, laundry list of uh, disclaimers start coming And Yeah. One of them is do not taunt happy fun ball. If happy fun ball begins to smoke, get away immediately. <laughs> seek, seek shelter and cover head. <laughs> Um, the ingredients from Happy Fun Ball include an unknown glowing green substance which fell to Earth, presumably from outer space. That's another <laughs> one. And it's just the disclaimers just get more and more insane as you go through the commercial. And it's the commercial is about 20 seconds of commercial and a minute and a half of disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I just love this idea that, that and you never it's never explained what exactly is so special about Happy Fun Ball just that it's super dangerous. And I just Mm -hmm. love this idea. I think it goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning of the episode. I think the the more dangerous a toy seems, the more cool it seems for a kid. And if there was a happy fun ball and it's, and all those things were true, you better believe there would be kids that would be dying to get their hands on one of those (laughs) and hiding them from their parents before 
they get them taken away from them and sent to the uh, be buried in some sort of like the Atari video games in some sort of mm -hmm. underground mine in in you know, New Mexico to be never seen again. And that is a good uh, thing to bring up. Like, was uh, the fact that you could uh, shoot your eye out one of the selling points for Ralphie <laughs> for the Red Rider? Yeah. Uh, it was it is is the apparent danger and mischief that you could uh, get involved the actual attraction because I mean that's that's how the way adults oper operate <laughs> you know interested in the stuff that's bad for you anyhow so. you know yeah, it's, there's absolutely. there's just there's just an age when there's just like no kind of actual issue with like buying your kid a gun a BB gun mm -hmm. as it is and it's funny like just tonight I'll I'll bring it back to Felix we're reading a. a a Curious George story. Curious George gets a medal, and at some point, Curious George goes to a museum or sneaks in, and the back of the museum is a man, a guard, reading a newspaper, and he's smoking a pipe. And he's like, "What's that? What's he? What's he doing?" And we're like, "Oh, well, some." Uh. In the first, in the first <laughs> Curious George book, he smokes a pipe too. The monkey does, and it's just like, well, some people like to. Put have his pipe or a cigarette and inhale it, and they it tastes awful and smells awful, but they like <laughs> it somehow. And you had to explain like, oh, people do awful things to their bodies on purpose, in spite of how you know things are bad. And it's such a different, you know, such a different age to read it in a Curious George book from like you know the the forties or the thirties, maybe the fifties even. And um, the same thing with like. Uh, you know, the Red Rider BB gun. It's just like, oh yeah, kids just got BB guns at some age. And it's just like, I, it's so, it's such another world. That yeah. That was just a toy. A toy was just a, this, a, a physical gun, not even just like a ray gun that makes noises. It was just like, oh, it's a, yeah, you can go shoot things. Have at it. <laughs> you know, do you think people who wrote Curious George escape the Nazi camps or something like that? So like for them just, Guns, <laughs> knives. Yeah, the fact that he swallowed a puzzle piece is not really that big of a deal for them. <laughs> oh, that's a fun choice. That's a fun choice. Uh, so, dudes, um, uh, just to uh, dip into the crowdsource a little bit, I want to thank all the people who were kind enough to comment. Our friend Erica had terrible a accidents on pogo sticks in the 80s. Mm. Um, and... Lisa Joella mentioned actual playground equipment and as a uh, meaning Ooh. like the metal merry-go-round thing with bars and no seats. Do you remember that? It was just bars. Yeah. I wish you could sit down. Yeah. You get flinged off. Um, our buddy Justin Ficklin mentioned lawn darts, uh, mm. which means that's going to go up on the Mount Rushmore lawn darts. Uh, Colin Douglas went uh, waxed um, uh, melodic and episodic and poetic about everything that Stretch Armstrong could do to kill a child. Um, <laughs> I'd say the real winner out there was Clackers. Uh, do you remember oh, those I, things? Yeah, I thought about those. Yeah, those the, they're like the the acrylic balls that would hang on the yeah. on, on ropes. And I think it was a Bond murder weapon in one movie, but Christopher <laughs> Kyer mentioned that um, the Clackers, um, my Aunt Jerry... Uh, Lynn Oldoffer uh, mentioned um, clackers. There was a lot of people. Uh, good buddy Tim Granlin mentioned slingshot. Um, clackers is a new comedy club opening up in Burbank yeah, soon, right? Yeah. You know, a friend, a friend uh, of the podcast, Jody Leninger, mentioned BB guns, which you just brought up. But also, and did, just yeah. plain and just plain golf balls never get in did any good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid, you could. You could kind of mess yourself up with a golf ball if you threw it the wrong way. So, Are we just making just, a – should I just make a laundry list of things I had thrown at me as a kid by other kids? Yeah. Roofing, <laughs> shingles from a roof. I got my foot cut on one one time. Bled all over the place. Oh, God. I would, that's our next episode. Um, uh, <laughs> but then our buddy Stephen Clark said, do not taunt happy fun ball. So let's uh, put a happy fun ball up there as uh, – a Mount Rushmore choice and uh, the very compelling uh, my friend Kayla, the spying device. Um, and um, why One not more. just be 
just because it's uh, summer. Let's um, no, I, I think Legos are the bane of many people's existence. So sure, Legos, yeah. So um, so there we go. Uh, this has been the Mount Rushmore of Dangerous Toys. I, as always, am Jeff. I'm Richard. I'm Michael. 